State Volleyball, entertaining MCC foe, the Flames of the University of Illinois, Chicago. Hello, I'm Chris Collins. It's a pleasure again to be working with former Raider Annie, Angie Nunnally. And Angie, we've got the coach here with us right now, but this will be your second game, and it's a key conference matchup. I'd like to see Wright State could bring another win, and I think it'll be an exciting game. All right, Coach, got to ask you the question tonight. We're going to be through the first half of the conference season. This is a pivotal game. Both these teams tonight come in with a conference record of 2-2. Two and two. This match is huge for us tonight. We really need to make a statement about where we stand in the conference, and doing it against UIC would be great, especially head-to-head. -head. Breaking that tie head-to-head -head would be really, really good for us when it comes time for the conference tournament. I know you've been pleased with the progress of your players, especially some of your younger players, and... The, cl the uh, clown on this team happens to be Ali Smurz. Not only does she help your team off the court, but she's also a very fine player. Yes, Allie's been playing really well, and she's worked her way into the starting lineup and is doing well, and she's just an absolute riot off the court. So she's fun to have around, and, and we're just really, really happy that she's with our program. Coach, how do you, how's your team preparing for this game tonight, a young team that you have, but you're improving game by game? Well, we worked on our scouting report this week, and we know we need to block well against them. They have some dynamic outsides this year, and it uh, gives them a little bit different look, and, and they like to hit cross courts. We're going to try to adjust our block around that. We also want to run our middle as much as possible, and we think that's going to be able to take them out of their offense if we're running our middle. So hopefully we can do those things on the court that we talked about and worked on this week in practice. Coach, good luck tonight against the Flames. Thank you for being here. Hey, the excitement is coming up next. Stay with us. We've got volleyball from Wright State University. The Raiders hosting the Flames of UIC. Coming up next on Time Warner Sports. Choosing the college that's right for you can be tough. If you're looking for a university that can help you start right, look at Wright State University. We are committed to your success. We offer more than 140 degree programs and many have been nationally recognized for excellence. Wright State is dedicated to building a better tomorrow for its students. The best come to Wright State. Check us out and you'll see why. Call 1-800-247-1770. That's 1-800-247-1770. There is an easier way to find a job. The MCC, together with JobTrack.com, bring you the largest job listing website exclusively for students and alumni. It's where over 400,000 businesses have come looking for talents just like yours. The MCC and JobTrack.com, the fastest track between school and work. Check it out at your school's career center. What? Hmm, Dean's List. From the McLean Gym on the campus of Wright State University inside the Nutter Center, we're just moments away. As you can see the starting lineups being introduced to tonight's crowd. It's an MCC matchup, the Flames from UIC and the Wright State Raiders. Chris Collins, uh, once again, a pleasure to work with former Raider Angie Nunnally. And Angie, this is your second game, but you know, can feel excitement already as we head into the mid part of the MCC season, a very important time for teams, especially when you play at home like the Raiders tonight. And especially, Chris, when you're playing UIC, and there were two teams that are very similar in skills. Um, we've always been kind of neck and neck as far as the standings go in the conference, so it'll be an exciting game tonight. Well, we're just about ready for the first game of our match tonight. Uh, both teams coming off exciting five-game match victories uh, in the past week. Wright State will start number 12, Darlene Prunty, along with number 14, Liza Osterhage. Harris Day wears number 15. Mandy Gell is the, one of the top setters in the conference, wears number four, the sophomore from St. Henry. Allie Smurz, freshman, will get the start tonight, number nine, and also another freshman, Trisha Naisman, number two, wearing the Wright State uniform tonight, wearing the home white jerseys trimmed in black. See UIC will have the honors of the first serve as we get underway. And serving the first tonight will be number three, Ann Hintz, a 5'11 senior. She'll be joined on the floor by Lynn Clarkson, a 6'1 junior. Laura Clarkson, a six-foot sophomore. Tia Shepard wears number 10. Number eight is Eric Anderson, and number 27, Lisa Wilkins. And right from the start, a side out for the Raiders, and Mandy Gells will have the first service of the evening for the Raiders. A good shot right there of Darlene Prunty. Side out, UIC with the big hit was Lynn Clarkson using that 6-1 frame at the net. So both teams look like they're well focused for this in the beginning. Yes, I think so. And I think that that's important for Wright State today to come out focused. 
And we have another side out as outside hitter Karis Day was able to hit it hard enough off of Erica, Erica Anderson. So it will go back to the Raiders. You get a good look there on the right side of your screen of the freshman Trisha Naisman. Another former Redskin out of St. Henry, Ohio. Service in play, a great block at the net. Darlene Prunty put up those big arms and the Raiders score the first point. That's a great block by Darlene and Karis. Karis helped out there. Um, you can see Darlene was all the way outside, hands penetrating over the net, and Karis turned that ball in and it's a kill. You got a better look than I did from where I'm standing, and Karis Day will get credit for that block. Now we have a side out, it goes back to UIC. Substitution right state, Andrea Voss will come in, and Nasonman, the freshman, will come out of the lineup. Serving will be Lindsay Filkins. Averaging three and a half kills per game. That leads UIC this season. Service belongs to the Flames. Boss able to get it over the net. Sign up back to right state. Ayers is going to be very important here tonight, Angie. Oh, yeah. I, I would definitely think that. And, and I like what Wright State's doing right now. They're coming out aggressive. They're really attacking the ball. They're taking it to them. And I, I think they're, they're looking good so far. Substitution for the Raiders, sophomore from Vandalia Butler High School, wearing number one, Gretchen Bush with a service. Left side hit, goes out, so the Raiders score their second point here in this first game. Mentioned earlier, five game set for the UIC Flames within the last week. They went to, uh, actually they played Bradley on a neutral site at a high school in the Chicago area and won that one, winning the last three games. Block at the net, Liza Osterhage is able to touch. And the Raiders pick up their third point here in this first game. Liza's had a decent season to this point with blocks. Ball still being volleyed about in the Raiders and too many hits. So the Raiders unable to capitalize on that service. So side out back to the Flames. Couple of substitutions quickly into the game. See number nine, Gina Caniva. Also number 14, Vicky LeBlanc. Blow a junior 5'11 out of Elgin, Illinois. Here's her serve into the middle of the Raider defense. Here's Gels. Day goes up high with a hit and she's able to score. Actually a side out for the Raiders and Karras will go back for the ball and she'll now serve for the Raiders. Karras Day, when you think about it, Angie, she's just a freshman last year but didn't see a lot of time due to injury. And now she's really starting to really feel her game. Yeah, Chris. Karis has really shown to be a leader this year, and I think that, you know, that's good for Wright State, and we need somebody like that, and she's a, she's a good all-around player. She's putting up a lot of uh, double games, you know, double digs, kills, and that's what they need, somebody that's a good all-around player. Look for consistency. There's Mandy Gels with a side out back for the Raiders, who lost it just a moment ago, and not a lot of volley here in this first game with the Raiders holding a three, three-point lead. Like I said, Raiders came out strong, and that's what they need to do, and they need to push the whole way through. Now you can see Ali Smur is way back there by that drape. She has what we call that floater serve, and this time unable to capitalize, and you can explain that to the fans. I mean, she's been very successful to this point. Yeah, very successful. Actually, Ali leads the uh, MCC in serving aces. Um, she's got 28 aces. She leads the MCC, and it's a, it's a tough serve. Now UIC scores their first point of the night. It's now a 3-1 Wright State lead here in game number one. Back to handle the service. Sophomore, six-footer Laura Clarkson. And with Terry Paws as one of the balls over by the official scores bench gets loose. With the sound of the whistle, we're back to action. There's Smurs with a hit. Day with nice hustle effort to Gels. Behind her back, she puts it over in the UIC end, but unable to capitalized defensively as Smurs as the Flames come up with another point, their second consecutive. That's scored by Tia Shepard, second on the Flames in scoring, averaging three kills per game. See if the Raiders can go on the attack. Naisman keeps it in play. Day with a dig. Here's Anderson setting up Clarkson, unable to be controlled by the Raiders, so the point will go to UIC. The game is now tied at three apiece. We expected a competitive contest. These two teams are close, and they even were when you were playing, Angie, in your days here at Wright State. Yeah, they always have been. They, you know, they have a good team, and so do we, and we seem to always go neck and neck with each other. 
Service a bit too long for Clarkson, so the Raiders will have it on the side out. Prunty quickly back in, hands the jersey to Gretchen Bush. So it's Prunty Naisman along the front line with Mandy Gills. See the middle hitter in Karis Day. Also, Ali Smur is standing on the back end line. Service by Osterhage. Anderson sets up Filkins. Ball kept alive. Good block of the net by the Raiders. Another block. This time it's Naisman. And is it still in? No, it's not. Goes back to the Flames on the side out. How important it is it? I mean, it, it may seem like an easy, logical question to win that first game of a match. Well, I think that it's 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 very important because you want to get that momentum going into the game right away, right right off the bat. You want to kind of set the tone. And there's Naisman with a side out back to right state. Mandy Gells, a former teammate of hers, Naisman at St. Henry High School. Naisman just a freshman here with the Raiders. And Mandy, who had a superb freshman season with Wright State, will handle the service. Anderson. Sets up Tia Shepard for the kill. You got to watch Shepard. Three kills per game. She's had two already here in this first first game. Game is tied at three. Yeah, I like what I see in Tia. She seems like a good player, and she's only a freshman. She's got the jump serve. Very familiar to yours, Angie. Clarkson at the net. Raiders unable to capitalize as Naisman didn't get a good touch on the ball, and out of position on the back line was Ali Spurs. So the Flames take their first lead of the game at four to three. They have scored four consecutive points. Been too strong that time on the service by Shepard. So side out back to Wright State. Nays been looking over some instructions along the Raiders bench. She too with the jump service. Anderson, the setter for UIC. Sets up Clarkson, Lynn Clarkson on the side out. So the Flames with a bit of momentum at this time. Scored four consecutive points. As right. they, go ahead, Angie. Right now, UIC is doing a really good job of passing, so they're able to run a lot of different options. And here's a nice hit by Brunty. It's a side out back to Wright State. Now, did I hear you correctly before we went on the air, Angie? Is it Darlene who's not feeling well tonight? Oh, yeah, she's very sick. <laughs> Give her A for effort. She's out there giving 100%. So right now she's talking along the sideline just out of our picture with head coach Joy Lynn Tracy. Another kill along the left side scored for Laura Clarkson. So side out back to the Flames. Substitutions. LeBlow back in along with Hintz. And LeBlow will handle the service for UIC up by one. Smurs digs in the middle, kills, sets up Osterhage. Good block by Anderson at the net for the Flames. Back to Day. Day back into the middle, dug out by Clarkson. Along the left side, soft touch. Score it again for Laura Clarkson. Laura did a good job there. That Those kind of plays like that, you want to mix up your shots, you know, kind of give it a little softer, roll it into the middle, get your defense off guard. That's, that's a good shot. With the defense to get into a rhythm. Here's Gell, sets up Day along the right side, and it's blocked at the net, and Clarkson have a terrific first game for UIC, and they've doubled the lead on the Raiders here in this first game. Dig by Smurs, Gell's left side, Smurs with a hit, blocked, kept alive, and out, side out right state. Wright State needs to take advantage of this side out here. They need to get back on track, get pull closer to UIC so they can get the momentum and get things going. Service is out, and side out will go back. So Harris Day unable to capitalize, and it gets back to errors again. Angie, you talked how important that is, especially in conference matchups at this point in the season. And especially with two teams like UIC and Wright State, uh, you really need to cut back on those errors. Osterhage with a little change herself. It's kept alive. Anderson will toss it over the net. Gells to Murs. And it's too strong along the backside. Mm -hmm. Allie's been playing terrific for Wright State. She earned the start here tonight with a splendid performance against the Phoenix of Wisconsin Green Bay a week ago. And Joylyn Tracy does not like what's transpired to this point. 
her home Raiders down by four now seven to three. When you look at the scoreboard Angie it's been seven consecutive points scored by the Flames and, and coach Tracy and uh, her coaching staff just want to get the team back together again. I, I think right now she's just telling them OK let's let's take a deep breath. Let's focus in. Let's work on one thing at a time. Let's work on getting a pass. And once we pass, we set and we hit. We've got to kind of take it step by step. It looks like Clarkson is getting a lot of open uh, opportunities along that left outside area for the Flames. Uh, it's just the way it's being set up for the Flames. Anderson, who is averaging almost 12 per game. Well, I think the USC is doing a really good job of passing. Um, so they're able to run all of their options, and so their middle is able to go in, and it's sort of like a fake. Um, you know, right states following the middle, and they kind of the middle blocker is not getting all the way out there to close that block on the left side, so they're getting the kills. Well, after the words of wisdom from the Raider coaching staff, right state heads back out onto the floor. This season, you can see the green painted on the court here, and the Raider Wolfhead facing the crowd on the opposite end of where we're sitting. A nice addition here in the McClin Gym. Back to action, a 7-3 UIC lead. Osterhage, Gales back to Osterhage at the net, and she is able to get the side out. And she came strong with that right hand along the right side. And the reason why Liza was able to make that play is because there was a good pass. She's nice and high up over the net, hits right off the blocker's hands. It's a great kill. Smurs with the floating serve. Keeps it in play. Anderson will set up Clarkson. Good dig by Day along the middle. Here's Osterhage again. And the Flames go for the ball, but Lyons is able to score. And the Raiders break that streak of seven consecutive points by UIC. It's now a three-point Flame lead. Well, apparently, what was said in the huddle has worked to this point for the Raiders. Yes, and that's, that's always good from a coaching standpoint. You want your team to come back out. You want your timeout to be effective. The Spurs' next attempt, that floating serve, which is, acts like a knuckleball, if you're familiar with baseball. As it got to the net, it just dove right into the top of the net. Very deceiving. There's Day with a dig. Bush along the left side, Naisman has to hit it over. Anderson set. Back over. Gells with a nice left hand. She could see that spot open up. It didn't look till the last minute, and she was able to shovel it down. It's nice to see Mandy being smart. You know, only a sophomore, that's, that's a good attribute to have as a setter. Of course, you taught her a lot last year. Is that right, Angie? <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, you'll take the credit for that. Sure. <laughs> it's now a 7-4. Raiders with the service. Gell's touch momentarily in the middle. Poster Hage. Left hand over is, is Gell's. And along the net, have a violation UIC. So the Raiders are able to score again. So they're on a small streak of their own now, trailing by one. Or two, I should say, seven to five. Nice to Oser Hage. Takes a glance over at Coach Joylin Tracy. A line drive serve to the middle. Anderson with the save. Like UIC out of sync, but they were able to get it over the net. Prunty with a soft touch. Back over Prunty again. Blocked by Anderson. Set up to Shepard along the left side. And the side out kill scored by Lindsey Filkins. Two substitutions, 13 and 3 into the lineup with the Flames. That's Ann Hintz, number three. Number 13 is Lynn Clarkson. Hintz with a service. Gills set left side. Naisman side out back to the Raiders. Got two freshmen out on the floor right now, Angie. And to this point, seems like they're coming along. Looks like a couple pretty good players here. Yeah, good players. Definitely. Smurs and Naisman. And it also helps when you have uh, people like Darlene and Karis and Liza and Mandy out on the court with you that have the experience. That definitely helps. Osterhage goes for that left sideline, unable to keep it in play. Side out back to UIC. Tia Shepard will serve. Liz Nelson, I should say, no, Don August, the head coach of the Flames, assisted by Chris Cooper and Julie Keck. Ball touched by the Flames, and it'll be side out back to Wright State. We mentioned both of these teams, two and two in conference play. Uh, you can see here that, again, Wright State was able to run that play only because of a good pass to start. Darlene, Manny was there ready. Darlene was ready. It's a good play. 
Good block of the net by Prunty. Clarkson, Gills for the Raiders today. Good block by Shepard. Shepard too strong, goes along the back line, so the Raiders will pick it up. Now trailing by one, seven to six. So it's been a game of runs to this point. The Raiders score the first three, then seven in a row for the guests UIC, and the Raiders have come back with three of their own. Smurs blocked by Anderson. Here's Karis Day with a sharp hit to the back and unable to be controlled by the Flames. Wright State again scores. We're tied up at seven. Trisha Naisman with a jump serve to the middle of the Flames. Court. Soft tip over. Gells with a nice play to keep it alive on the dig. Here's Smurs going for that back corner, and she cannot connect. Close, but just out. And substitution Raiders, Naisman out, and Andrea Voss in. I think this is key right here for Wright State. They need to get this ball back so they can get the momentum. And do it early. Gels sets up Prunty, made to order. And it gets back to passing again, doesn't it, Andy? Yes, it does. Mandy was in a good position, not only for her to set, but the pass to her to set up Prunty in that situation. Right. Yeah, and Darlene, you know, she's got to be there. The pass has to be good, so Darlene knows where she needs to go. Gretzen Bush. Anderson. Along the left side with a hit. Clarkson. Both the Raiders were able to capitalize. Wright State takes a one-point lead here in game one. This MCC matchup featuring the Flames of UIC and the Wright State Raiders. Which Joylyn Tracy at the bottom of your screen on the right side, pointing out directions to her players on the court. Like we have a net violation, and the ball will go to UIC on the side out. Back into the game for UIC, Vicki LeBlow, number 14, and number nine, Gina Caniva. LeBlow will serve. Coach Don August there with a the clipboard at the bottom of your screen. Calling out his set. Gills sets up Day with a hard hit. Anderson with a dig. Whistle along the side. Wright State will get it back. I wasn't too sure about that call. Our officials tonight, Steve DeBacco on the far side in the officials chair and John Kennard on the near side. Anderson, good dig by Day on the hit by Clarkson. Wright State able to capitalize again. Well, since trailing seven to three, Wright State has outscored UIC six to nothing. And Chris, let me tell you, I, I think that the reason why Wright State has, has been so effective the last couple points is because they're using the middle. And that middle seems to be really effective for them tonight. I think they need to keep using it. Adjustment's so important in any sport. Smurs left side set up Gales. Gales back to Smurs with a hit. Tipped by UIC. I believe, yes, it is. So the point goes to Wright State now leading by three. Callie Smurs starting to pick up her game. And we're going to have a timeout call right now by Coach Don August of UIC. As we have a 10-7 Wright State lead, you can see some of the crowd already starting to get into it a little bit, Angie. And you told me before the game tonight, it's interesting on how a lot of the former players are able to come back and, you know, watch the season. I don't know if there's a reason for that. They just, you know, that competitive nature just doesn't leave them, and they just want to see how the program continues to improve. Yeah, and I think also, you know, you spend four years in a program, and you just you have a lot of loyalty. You know, you, you can relate to the players that are on the court because you've been there, and it's exciting. It's exciting to come out and see your some of them, your former teammates, you know, doing well. And, 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 and at the same time, when they're not doing well, <laughs> You take it just as hard as they do. <laughs> Let's talk a little about Allie Spurs. We saw before we went out, number nine for Wright State, the freshman, starting tonight. She is uh, the team cut up, the clown, as uh, Coach Joylyn Tracy was telling us. We'll have a story to relate later on between, uh, between games. Uh, she keeps everyone loose, and everyone on this team just loves her to death, according to Coach Joylyn Tracy. Yeah, you know, I like what I see with Allie. I, I, I wish I could have played with her. Um, she seems like a real team player, and, you know, as a teammate, you want that. You want that characteristics in your team. And I definitely think she, she has those. Here's Clarkson. Osterhage was able to get two hands on it, but the middle of the Raider defense had a hole, and Bush was unable to get to it. So side out back to UIC. Both teams have called a timeout here in this first game. 
obviously very pivotal. Smurs with a dig, Gels sets up Prunty. Good block at the net by the Flames. Day, high pass, left side, Smurs nearly gets it in. Flames are able to keep it alive. Clarkson along the back line. Foss sets Smurs, slow hit into the middle. Dug in there by Hintz, over the net, Osterhage. Back to Gels, she decides to throw it over. Thought she was going to set that situation. There's Darlene Prunty with the stop. Substitution Raiders on the side out. Naisman back in. Boss will check out. And Allie Smurs. She's not all the way back by that drape. See so she can try a little she Might be so short. Well, maybe not. Didn't appear to be the floater that time. Anderson, left side, sets up Shepard. And Shepard able to get the blast along the left side and the side out back to the Flames. Laura Clarkson. Now serve for UIC. Trailing by three, 10 to seven. Service a bit too long, so errors have hurt both teams here in this first half. Both have committed well over 400 coming into this game. You look at the overall records, UIC with an impressive 13 and four overall record. However, in conference play, tied with the Raiders at two and two. Wright State seven and nine on the season. And the Flames come up short. On the dig attempt by Shepard. And Wright State now scores another point up by 11 to 7 count. Osterhage. His long arms puts it in play with the overhand service. Anderson at the net. Good block. Darlene Prunty. I like to see how she plays when she's well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Darlene's running that net tonight. She's owning it. She's, she's getting all the way out to the outside. She's get, putting up a lot of blocks. Poster Hage, Anderson, left side, Filkins, good block at the net by the Raiders front. Wilkins again, a little more finesse on that hit. Raiders with the service, Naisman at the front, back to Prunty, Gels, Karis Day, nice hit along the right side. UIC is able to answer. Poster Hage to Gels at the net, strong play by Clarkson. Raiders keep it alive, Day, Anderson, Good block again by Prunty. And we've got a call inside, and the point will go to Wright State. The middle, as you said, Angie, and the front line for the Raiders has really stepped up since trailing 7-3. to three. Wright State has scored 10 consecutive points and hold a six-point lead and another timeout for the Flames. Yeah, and the middle, you said the, the middle is doing really well. And unfortunately, with Darlene being sick, I think she's doing a great job of pushing herself. You know, she she's pushing herself to the limit. Hopefully, she'll be okay for tomorrow's game as well. Well, let's look at this MCC a little bit. Right now, Loyola seems to be the class of the of the conference. So still undefeated this time. And that's the team up next for Joylyn Tracy's team. But she told us before the game tonight, and every coach does, you know, you take them one at a time. And this UIC team, they match up real well with Wright State. And it's so important for them to get a victory, and especially a victory at home in the 17 conference. You want to get up as high as you can in the standings once tournament time comes around. Right. And also, you know, they're going to play UIC again. And I think that, you know, you want to have that first game under your belt when you play in the second round. It's almost like you want to send a message to your opposition. And UIC tonight, as we mentioned, they were down 3 nothing, but they were able to score seven consecutive points. But the Raiders have roared back to this point, just two points from taking the first game. Anderson, good block of the net, Prunty, ball high in the middle. Osterhage, Gels, Naisman with a hit. Was it tipped? I don't think so. Apparently not. So the side out goes to UIC. The officials looked at each other across the net before they made the determination. So the Flames looking to turn their fortunes around here. They've been outscored 10 to nothing in this first game. Gels, left side pass to Naisman. Blocked by the Flames. May, back to Naisman. A good block at the net. Tia Shepard with a side out hit. Again, this is where Wright State needs to pass a little bit better, so Mandy has some more options to run some uh, different players, because if you're always setting the ball outside, the other team knows that that's where it's going. 
Prunty with a hit. UIC unorganized and able to hit there. Diving for the ball was Laura Clarkson coming up short. So side out back to the Raiders. You mentioned options, Angie. How many options do you have out there as a team in situation? Well, it depends. If, if Mandy's in the front row, you have um, two hitters. You have your middle hitter and you have your left side. And then you also can run plays out of the back row. Um, when she's not in the front row and she's in the back row, you have three players. Whistle away from the ball as Tia Shepard goes for the kill. And it will be a point for Wright State. Too many touches on the UIC side. This is going to be game point. It's 14 to 8 Raiders. Here in game number one. Anderson, Clarkson, Gills. Good movement by the Raiders. Harris Day with a hit, kept alive by Anderson. Left side, Filkins. Filkins goes back for the ball. Hit back over the net by Clarkson. And UIC, some tremendous hustle, able to get the side out. Yeah, UIC is, is, is definitely a scrappy team. They're, you know, they're all over that court. They don't let the ball drop on their side. Well, as we mentioned, against Bradley last week in their last match, they were down two games to none and able to fight back in the last three to beat the Bradley Braves. And Wright State with the side out. Harris Day and Naisman able to hook up there to get the ball back for the Raiders. So game point here, Wright State up 14 to 8. Trisha Naisman, freshman from St. Henry High School. Jump serve. In play. Anderson. Left side. Filkins. Gales keeps it alive. Osterhage. Kept alive by Hintz. Anderson. Clarkson. Finds the hole, side out Flames. Substitution right state, Andrea Voss back in. Naisman will have a seat. Lisa Filkins with the service for UIC. Dig by Smurris, Gels. Back right side hit by Karis Day, and back it goes to right state. Quickly, Gretchen Bush back in. Pronti will have a seat. That was a nice play by Karis because she was able to bring that ball back in. You notice it was kind of set far outside the antenna. She did a good job bringing that ball back in. For the third straight time, Wright State game point. Service Bush. Anderson doesn't set. She finds a big gaping hole along the Raider backside defense, and Andrea Valls unable to step up in time to keep it alive. So back it goes again to the Flames on the side out. UIC has been very effective tonight with those roll shots and uh, tips and shorter shots in the middle. It's kind of catching Wright State off guard. Joylyn Tracy, some words of encouragement for her Raiders. Karis Day strong with a hit, blocked by the Flames at the net. Spurs will try it, blocked again by Clarkson. Gills over the top, and there's Osterhage. You can tell those two work very well together. They do, and it, again, it, Manny made a smart choice there because she just went to her right side and her left side both players got blocked and it's that's a smart play to run the middle seemed like they had a rhythm between the two Osterhage was ready for that pass by Gels. Osterhage keeps it a lot Gels has to hit it over kept in play by LeBlow left side Filkins back to Osterhage Anderson and the kill scored by Laura Clarkson side out back to UIC so the Flames will not go away easily here in this first game, trailing by six. And Wright State on the verge of taking game one. Service Anderson and Wright State. Service, I should say, side out back. Now for the fifth time, an opportunity to take game one. Naisman for Boss. Service honors will be freshman Ali Smurs. Back she goes for the long floating serve. Anderson, left side hit. Smurfs with a nice dig along the back line. Gretzen Bush. Far side, Shepard. Clarkson, there's Smurfs again with a big dig. Naisman with a hit. And UIC unable to control, and Wright State takes game number one, 15 to 8, over a scrappy UIC team. And We'll go ahead and keep it right here as we move to the second game. And pretty exciting first game. And Allie Smurs a couple of big digs there on that uh, game point. Big digs. And I think also, you know, Wright State needs to pick up their defense right now because right now they're kind of sitting back, relaxed. 
not really being aggressive, anticipating what's going to happen, and these balls are dropping. Uh, they, that's what they need is, is plays like that from Alley, you know, digging up those balls. We get an opportunity. Yes, uh, we're going to try to see uh, the game point in the situation. Back and forth we go. And it looks at Smurfs. Look at that dig, extending her body along the backside. Yeah, she did a great job of, in her positioning as well because um, when you notice when the UIC player hit the ball, they hit it right in between Liza's arms. And, and Allie was in a good position to, to dig that ball. And then Trisha did a you know a good job hitting high off the hands of the blockers, and that can be just as effective as a you know straight down kill. Experience always helps you in any sport. Um, you were talking about the vision that Allie had back along that back line. For a player to be successful along that back line, what what kind of attributes do they need to possess? Well, Chris, I, I think that. You know, defense is, is, is sort of a frame of mind. Um, you have to be anticipating every every time that that ball is going to come at you, or you know that it's not even that it's going to come at you, that it's just going to come somewhere in your area, and that's yours. You've got to be aggressive. It's it's just the whole idea of not letting the ball hit the ground. You know, it's like a choice that you make in your mind that it's not hitting the ground. And you see what Ali did in those two situations there for game point and keeping the ball alive. It's also the technique that you use and able to dig to keep that ball in place so your teammates are able to control also. Yeah, I think as far as technique goes, um, you, you always want to try to use both of your hands. You, you know, you want to keep your arms together. Uh, coaches will try to discourage using the one-handed digs. They're just not as effective. You can't control them as well. So it is important to keep your hands together and stay low on defense and just, you know, kind of move through the ball. Well, we got our first game statistics, and what really jumps out is two Raiders have six kills in this first game. Darlene Prunty and Liza Osterhage. But you look at that attack percentage, 667 for Darlene Prunty here in this first half. Mandy Gels, uh, once again, another strong first half uh, with assists. She has seven, but team-wise, both teams even up as far as the errors are concerned, eight apiece. And like I said, the stats show here that the middles are, are really affected tonight. And I think if, you know, what Wright State needs to do is keep running those middles, you know, keep utilizing Darlene. Looks like she's having a great night with 667. That's a great night. Um, Manny needs to recognize that and continue to feed Man er, Darlene and Liza. Mandy with 20 assists in that first game. And you look at the digs and the freshman Smurs with nine as like the number on the back of her jersey and no two bigger than in that last game point. Back. Yeah. I, I, I really like Allie. I think she's a great defensive player as well, a good all-around player. And, I, and I, I think that the other players here need to step up and get some more digs too you know, in you order could, for them to be successful. You know, Angie, you could just tell as she made those digs also how the team just seemed like, you know, just to jump right up and just were able to execute, you know, at 100%. It's like it just lifts them too. Yes. Oh, yeah, it's very exciting when your teammate it's a dig, that, a great dig like those. It's very exciting. Well, the whistle sounds, and we're back to action. Raiders take game one, 15 to 8. And we'll have the honor of the service. Anderson sets up Shepard, and Shepard unable to keep it in play. And the Raiders, like they did in the first game, will take a one point lead. You can see the Shepard. She's an attacker, number 10 for UIC. Shepard gets a piece of it, pickled by, by Hintz. And too strong by Lynn Clarkson. And the Raiders jump out to that 2 0 lead. Angie, this situation, you take a hard fought first game. The second game, you want to come out strong and maybe try to put away your competition. Yeah, definitely. Um, you, it's always scary sometimes as a coach when you when you call when you you have your change of games because you want to stay out there and keep that momentum. And, and it's like sometimes your players get you know, come off the bench and they sit for two minutes and it's like, oh. You'll know what to expect. Yeah. Shepard with the service on the side out for the Flames. Naisman too strong. And the Flames will score their first point. It's now a 2-1 match here in this game, number two. We mentioned a slow arriving crowd, but a good size amount there here in the McLean gym. Starting to fill up. Prunty with a soft touch. Blocked back over by UIC's Clarkson. Left side hit Naisman, but it's blocked up front by UIC. And in your hands on the ball was Lynn Clarkson, number 13. So that's point number two for the Flames. Game is tied at two apiece. 
Spurs this time is not able to hit the ball the way she wanted to. And you look at the expression on her face after the ball hit off her hand. She knew that she made an error. And I'm sure she's thinking in her mind right now, OK, I have to shake that one off, and now I have to get the next pass. And it goes right back at her. So the Flames go after the freshman, and Wright State scores. Actually, it's the side out. Prunty will get credit for the kill. And Allie was able to answer with a good pass. And Manny was able to run the middle, which I think is going to be very effective. You can see Manny's got a great set for Darlene. Just hits it right in between the blockers, does a great job. Karis Day, Gels, sets Naisman, blocked at the net. Good two-hand block up front as my papers go flying away. Nice catch, Angie. Playing the defense here tonight. That was Lynn Clarkson, number 13. So side out for UIC. And the Flames up by one, three to two. Service error. Lindsey Filkins unable to get the ball over the top of the net. And Wright State will get it back on the side out. Trisha Naisman. Jump service. Nearly keeps it in, but goes out by about six inches. So it's a side out for UIC. Into the game, Vicki LeBlow, number 14, and Gina Kaneva, number nine. Wright State with a substitution, number eight, Andrea Voss along the back line, along with Smurs and Osterhage. Up front, we see Gels, Day, and Prunty. Dig by Voss. Right side hit by Karis Day. It's countered by the Flames, but they can't handle Darlene Prunty in the middle of the net. Darlene will come out of the game on the side out. Gretchen Bush comes in to offer the service up to the Flames. UIC with a lead here in game two, 3-2. Wright State leading one game to none. Gels sets Day. Left side Smurs blocked at the net. Good play up there by the Flames. That was Gina Kaneva who just stepped into the game. I think Wright State needs to spread out the offense a little bit more. Um, right now, UIC is kind of camped on the left side hitters. Need to get some more options going here. Gels with a set to Day. Block again up front. Laura Clarkson, number one. So the Flames were able to put together an early run in that first game. Able to score seven unanswered points before the Raiders roared back and took it by a score of 15 to 8. Smurs left side hit. Had some powder on that one. Was able to be blocked by the Flames over the mitt. And there it is. That's Darlene, or I should say, lead Liza Osterhage with the hit in the middle. Seems to be a strong point here for the Raiders tonight. Yes, definitely. Um, Manny is set and Liza just perfect. You can see she's got an open net. They're not expecting anybody there. And, and, and it's a kill every time. Timing impeccable between Gels and Osterhage. Smurs, dig Gels, soft hit back over the net. Flames counter, left side, Clarkson. There's Day, Osterhage. Clarkson at the net, kept alive by Gels, hits it back into the middle of the Flame defense. Touch, Gels got a good volley going right here. Osterhage, left side hit, Smurs, and she oh. finds the spot. That was a beauty. That was a great play. UIC was not even expecting that at all. They were expecting her to hit that ball, and that's a smart play for a freshman. Allie Spurs with her second kill of the night. And the Raiders on the side out. Trail 4-3. Anderson sets Kaneva, and Kaneva will get it back on the side out hit by the Flames. Collins, Angie Nunley, glad to be with you here tonight on Time Warner Sports as we bring you Wright State University Volleyball. Raiders and the Flames of UIC in an MCC matchup. Both teams with records of two and two in the conference. A pivotal game as each team in the conference plays each other twice, so the first round of games will be over after tonight for Wright State. And they'll get back into it with Loyola tomorrow. Smurs with a floating serve. Anderson will set, finds teammate Filkins, kept alive by the Raiders, good set to Osterhage. And again, Gels and Osterhage combined for the side out for Wright State. I should say for the point, we're tied at four. And this is really exciting to see Mandy and Liza clicking like this. Um, it's important on your team that your middles and your setters have a, have a good flow, a good combination, and, the, and they're able to put the ball away. Flame set left side, Filkins. Into the spot, Tara Trissel for first action of the night. She's along the left side for the Raiders wearing number 11. 
Good block at the net, and I think that's number 14, Osterhage. You can see Liza got all the way outside. She was all the way, hands nice and spread apart, penetrating over the net, and it's a, it'll be a block every time. Anderson, backside set, finds Shepard. Cross kill, and she has the side out hit for UIC. And Hintz back into the game. Also joined by Lynn Clarkson, number 13. Raiders up by one. Five to four here in game two. Hintz with a hit. Gales left side, Trissel blocked at the net by Clarkson. And that ball goes out, belongs to Wright State. Hit middle a bit too strong by Lindsey Filkins. Wright State's Osterhage will handle the service. Prunty back in for the Raiders. Osterhage waiting for the officials to call for action. And Osterhage with the overhand hit. Can't get it over the top of the net. And the Flames, and haven't seen too many errors for Wright State here tonight. Our first broadcast earlier this season with UCF, University of Central Florida. Wright State seemed to have some problems consistently getting the ball over on the service. Yeah, and, and, and so did UCF, actually. It, yeah. was, it was like we, you know, Back we sat and watched <laughs> Miss Serve, Miss Serve. And that kind of breaks the continuity of each team, I would think. You try to get into that rhythm you spoke about earlier, Angie. Yeah, it's frustrating. You, you can't score unless, unless you can serve. Anderson into the game, scoring the kill as Amy Zabajnik. Zabajnik with her first touch of the game. She'll go back now and handle the serve. 5-4, side out, UIC. Bojnik, a junior, 5-10 out of Berwyn, Illinois. Osterhage with a dig. Zabajnik, Anderson, Clarkson. Dig, Smurs, hits it to the middle. Prunty will get it over the net. Anderson, left side hit, goes out of bounds. As Laura Clarkson tried to find the hole along the left sideline, but she hit it too strong. And it'll be a side out for the Raiders. Andrea Voss into the game will receive the ball for the serve. Voss overhand hit. Line drive service jump and a missed time jump by Lynn Clarkson. Ball kind of floating along that left side and she went up a little bit too early. Yeah, and, and that's that's what I'm talking about between your middles and your setter. You've got to have that connection. Setter's got to know where their middle's at. Another service there, Andrea Voss. So the Raiders have committed more. I guess you can accuse me of, the, of that one. I just said a few moments ago they've done better tonight, and we've already seen three since I opened my big mouth. <laughs> right State leading 6-4. to four. Service UIC. Smurs with a dig, backside. Gills sets up Day. Good block of the net by Clarkson. Good hustle by Gills. Spurs able to get it over the net, but maybe too many hits. Yes, so it'll be a point for the Flames. It's now 6 5. Well, you can't fault the hustle on that play. No, that was nice. And, and, and it's good that your players are there and ready when, when your players get blocked. You got to have somebody there to pick them up. Spurs blocked at the net. Question by the officials. Ball hit by Gina Kaneva. And it's going to go to Wright State. Uh, apparently the ball hit into the net by UIC. And right now I can see right there on the floor Gina Kaneva, number nine, who apparently touched it, couldn't understand the call. Be that as it may, Wright State with a serve, leading by one. And a one games to none lead here in this match against the Flames. Day and Prunty handle it. Left side, Smurs. Blocked by the Flames, front line, Gills will set Day with the hit. Shepard unable to keep it alive as Anderson goes over towards the crowd here tonight along the far sideline. And Wright State will get another point now up by 2, 7-5. Bush, Anderson behind the back. Good hustle by Prunty. Voss, and once again, too many touches for the Raiders. The Flames player caught Wright State off guard there. I don't think they thought that she was going to throw it over in that situation. No. They're looking for the set. Day a dig. 
Gills. Left side, Smurz goes strong for the kill. And with a little emotion, I think this team really takes up to her. Definitely. I mean, you know, when your player gets excited about getting a kill like that, it's pretty exciting. And she, she just uses that outside blocker there. Raiders with a service. And finding a hole in the middle of the Raider defense was Laura Clarkson. So we've been back and forth, back and forth here in this second game. Raiders were able to take that first one by a count of 15 to 8. Clarkson, dig, boss. Nice move by Mandy Gills. You look, play. <laughs> you look for her to set, and this time she decides to get the score. And it was interesting, Angie, in the last game against University of Central Florida, you say sometimes it's good for a setter to do this. Oh, yeah, and, and because, you know, you expect them to set the ball, and they're, look, their defense isn't even ready for it. You know, she just flips it right over, and, and actually, Mandy, she attacks the ball quite often, and she's effective at it. Kind of curious when she makes her decision that she's going to do that. Day. Thought we may have had a net violation, and I think we did. Steve DeBacco along the far side official makes the call, and Allie Smurz will have the service with the Raiders up 8-5. We need some of those aces from Allie. Standing very near one of our camera stands, and her floater unable to get up over the net. A bit of frustration shown by Joylyn Tracy. She realizes right now that she'd like her team to get back on another run like they enjoyed in that first game. Well, especially because, you know, they're missing their serves, you know, and that's sort of a fundamental skill. But yet at the same time, it, it's, you know, you got to be consistent with them, and that's frustrating. Gell sets up Osterhage, and we've mentioned that one all night long. These two in sync tonight, side out Wright State. Eliza with six kills in the first game. Will handle the service responsibility in this situation. Clarkson with a dig. Anderson will set at the net. Dig by Smurz on the back line. Gills. It's moving smooth with Day. And I think Karis, a little out of sync there with her hit. She looks over to Manny and says, Hey, you set it up pretty nice. I just didn't capitalize. Side out, UIC. Shepard, the left-handed serve, Gells, left side set for Trissel. Hard hit, blocked by Clarkson. Anderson, good dig by Spurs, apparently got it on the short hop. Amy Jabodnik with the kill, side out Flames. 8-6. Right state with a lead. Jump service by Shepard. Too strong. Side out Raiders. 8 6 is two points separating these two teams here in game number two. We thought at the outset it would be a closely contested game. Both teams with the records of two and two. Mandy Gell's a little change there, apparently. And Hintz didn't see that ball well as uh, she was a little late on the dig attempt. And Gell's will go back once again to serve for the Raiders. Up now by three. Anderson sets up Lynn Clarkson. Clarkson with a side out hit for the Flames. So we've seen a lot of back and forth action here in the first and second games. And that's the way it usually goes when UIC and Wright State play each other. Bentley, you've got to be in the game from beginning to end. Harris Day floating along the left side, went for the kill, but hit too strong. Point Flames now trail by two, nine to seven. Lynn Clarkson, dig in the middle by Murs, Gills, Trissel with the attempt, blocked by Clarkson in the middle. Day goes for the short, soft hit, handled by the Flames, and hit into the net by Shepard. Side out, right state. Substitution, Andrea Voss will replace Tara Trissel. Voss will come in for the serve. Back in, kept in by Shepard. Tip over the net, Gells with a dig. Set in the middle, Day to Voss. Backside dig by Zdzinski. And the hit too strong. However, Laura Clarkson lobbing that maybe one of the Raiders touched it, and apparently that worked because it does belong to the UIC Flames. 
side out flames. No argument from the right state in. Although Joylyn Tracy, a few words for yeah. our official along the near sideline, John Kennard. He looked a little close. Substitution Raiders on the side out. Bush back in. Prunty will have a seat. Nine seven Raider lead. Gretzen Bush, sophomore from Vandalia. Soft service over the net. Clarkson in the middle. Bush Gels sets up for Osterhage. Flames with a dig. Gels, good save by Karis Day. Keeps it alive and over the net. Clarkson finds the big hole in the middle of the defense, though, and scores for the Flames. Side out UIC. Frailing to I just two here in game two. Left side hits Spurs strong. Ball is hit high along the deep side. Good hustle there by Clarkson along the right side. That's Vicky LeBlow, I should say, but Smurs had a lot of power in that shot from the left side. Yeah, she did, and, and it, the set was a little bit lower, so she was able to come in quicker, really drive in hard, and, and get a tough swing on it. So she seems to hit the ball pretty high up in the air. Day after the side out for the Raiders. Strong hit at the net by Shepard. Shepard has had a decent game to this point for UIC. Laura Clarkson, out of Laporte, Indiana, sophomore, along the backside with a serve, and this time the freshman and the sophomore, Andrea Voss, both go at the dig, and ball misfired, so at a point for the Flames, it's just a one-point separation now here in game two. A little bit of miscommunication between the two. Clarkson with the service. Gells left side. Sets it in the middle to Smurs. Little touch. Ball over the net. Osterhage, a little ragged right there, but Osterhage gets the roll, so to speak, yeah. and side out back to Wright State. And UIC is so scrappy, you know? They're really, they're picking up those balls. You know, they're just scrappy. They're going after everything, and sometimes I don't think Wright State's ready for it. Well, you've got to answer that as the opposition, too. You'd be scrappy yourself. Make sure that you execute properly. Day, middle, Gills, sets right side, Osterhage. It's too strong. Looks like Liza asks for the tip, but to no avail, so side out, UIC. You know, Liza's a, another one of those players that you just enjoy playing with. Um, she's got a, a good team attitude. You know, she's you know worried about the team and, and you know, how Everybody's clicking, and it's fun to play with as well. With not a lot of space out there, you want to have players who are able to get along and communicate right. well. Because everything depends on every player. You know, you're, you got your pass, your set, and your hit, and they all build off of each other. It's definitely not an individual sport. Spurs on the backside with the right-hand dig. Anderson in the middle. Nice diving dig by Gales. Sets up Trissel. Dug out by Clarkson. Left side's a Boniak. Smurs with a defensive dig. Left side, Trissel again, a little softer this time. Shepard, left side set, it's a Boniak. There's Day to answer. Trissel again, left side with a hit. And blocked at the net. And it's going to be a touch on the Flames back to Wright State. Good concentration there by Wright State. Yeah, it's always exciting when you have long rallies like that and, and you're the one that wins it. <laughs> Especially when you're tired. And when you hold on just to a one-point lead, nine to eight is the score, Raiders, leading one game to none. Anderson, but you see the kill by Lynn Clarkson. Clarkson using that frame six foot one junior from LaPorte, Indiana, and Wright State unable to get to that smash in the middle. And UIC on the side out now, trail by one. Jump service by Shepard. Can't control it. Side out, Wright State. Wright State needs to pull away here. They need to take advantage of this side out. Get some points on the board. You're constantly making adjustments during the game. Raiders have been successful in the middle tonight, especially in that first game. Here's Shepard with a strong hit, and Kingel's unable to get to it. I don't know if she just didn't see it or just the velocity of the hit by Shepard was just too much. Yeah, I don't know necessarily that she was expecting it. You know, she was in the back row and 
Sometimes you don't think your back row players are going to attack, but they do. Side out Raiders, Trissel out, Boss back in. Both teams exchanging possessions here in the last three volleys. Andrea Voss just gets it over the top of the net. Anderson left side set to Clarkson. Was it tipped by Wright State? Nope, the point belongs to the Raiders. Now they're in double digits up by two. And we've got a timeout called by UIC. So Coach Don August obviously sees this as a very important time here in this game, in a pivotal game, I think, with his team. You know, already losing that first one 15 to 8. This one has been very tight throughout, Angie. 10 8, Wright State up by two. Yeah, and, and I'm sure that he's telling his players right now, you know, we need to come out and we need to cut down on our errors and, and, and just come together as a team. And I'm sure he's hoping to break some of the momentum of Wright State right now. And at the same time, I think Joy Lynn's saying, okay, let's go out here and let's be strong, let's stay together, and let's push through this game. See Joy Lynn Tracy, who's just a few months away from the first child. She says she always has a lot of energy. It's nice to have the addition of assistant coach Rob Beam. Of course, once again, Mike Schroeder back. But the chance to talk about Beam a little bit as the players head back out into the court. This guy is very, very passionate about this game of volleyball. And he's brought some energy to this team. Yeah, very passionate. And and I, from what I understand, the girls love him. Um, he's he's a good balance for the team because when the time is 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 necessary, he's very serious and focused and very passionate and wants the team to do well and yet on the other hand he's somebody that you can talk to you know and on a friendly basis and they just seem to get along with them really well he's seated right to the left to Joy Lynn Tracy and the Raiders score yet another point after the timeout now 11 to 8 UIC Raiders as we mentioned 2 and 2 in the conference they trail Butler 3 and 1 Milwaukee at 4 and 1 in Loyola 4 and 0 oh. Anderson successfully sets up Lynn Clarkson. Backside boss unable to handle it. So it's a side out for UIC. You can see here she does a good job. The middles just aren't ready for it. And the, the, you know, the defense needs to be pulled in a little bit more when there's no middle there. So important, as you say, the middle to get to their spots. Day too strong. Kara is still looking for her stroke here tonight. Looks like she's getting a lot of velocity, but uh, just hasn't got that control as of yet. Yeah, I don't think she's swinging through the ball all the way. You know, a lot of her balls have been going out. It's like she's, she's just not getting on top of it and swinging through. But she'll come around. Prunty with a hammer hit. Smurs keeps it alive. Gills, soft touch by Karis Day. UIC is able to answer. Clarkson hits it over. Gales will set up Day. Tries to go to the middle front. Ball kept alive by Keneva. And blocked at the net. That's Darlene Prunty with the big arms. Darlene happy about it. Now that's the best medicine. You can score a point like that. That's going to help her. We, we mentioned earlier on, if you're just joining us, Darlene not feeling particularly well here tonight. She's taking advantage of these breaks. <laughs> Raiders up by two, 11 to nine. And ooh, another air, Gretchen Bush top of the net side out Anderson will have the service responsibility for UIC days dig Gels sets day on the left side nice block along the left side by Laura Clarkson Clarkson scores the point on the kill it's 11 to 10 and Joylyn Tracy up off the right state bench will call a timeout Again, here I think what needs to happen is right, needs, right State needs to spread out the offense a little bit, you know, keep them guessing of where the ball's going to go because right now they're camped on Karras. And um, she has gotten, you know, the last five or six sets, and so they're there. They know that she's going to get the ball. Constant adjustments throughout the game. You say that, you know, the middle hit, gell has been able to set up, and it appears to be that UIC is, it's like they're just clustering players along the left side of their defense not allowing Wright State maybe to get a good shot in there. Mm -hmm. What can you do to counter that? Just like you said, a little more passing? Uh, yeah, definitely. Reversal? Definitely. Uh, you, I think that's also what's happening at Wright State right now is they're not getting their passes. And, you know, they're doing well. Um, but I think that Manning needs to see right now that 
the right side is getting blocked. You know that the defense is there as well as the blockers. And just mix it up, do what they've been doing all night, and they'll be fine. Well, Gills heads back out with teammates. Osterhage, Day, Smurz, Gretchen Bush along the back line, and Andrea Voss. UIC's Anderson averaging nearly 12 assists per game will handle the service. UIC trailing by one, 11 to 10. Wright State wins the first game. We're in game two. Left side set, Smurz tries to use the finesse shot, not able to get it past the net. And the Flames have tied this one up at 11. Anderson with a hit. Gills sets up Osterhage. Nice dig by Anderson. Clarkson, the block by Day. And we've got the call, UIC. So back it goes on the side out to Wright State. That's big. Let's see if the Raiders can capitalize here on the service. Yeah, this will, this will be key here. Karis Day. Clarkson, Anderson sets up Shepard. Finesse touch, Spurs handles it, Osterhage. Left side defense, Shepard over the top, Osterhage had the advantage. She saw Shepard, I think may have made a mistake right there. I don't know if she wanted to set or what, but there was no one behind her. Yeah, and also, you know, like I said before, Manny's recognized that she needs to use her middles. She's a great setter, she can see that. And, and like I said, now that they're running those middles, running some other plays, they're, they're coming back in it. 12-11, Wright State. Clarkson, dig by Voss on the back line. Smurz goes high with the hit. Anderson to Clarkson. Blocked by Gales, but too much on the shot by Laura Clarkson. Side out. Wright State up by one. Belongs to UIC. Clarkson, who scored the kill, will now serve. Smurs. Osterhage. Clarkson. Anderson, the center, unable to get to it. Not a lot of space to work there, so side out Raiders. 12-11, Allie Smurs, the freshman, out of Wisconsin. You see her number nine. With her floater serve. Clarkson handles it on the back line. Anderson, the shepherd, at the net, touch over by Osterhage. Again by Eliza. Clarkson, left side set to Shepard. Nice dig by Day in the middle of the defense. Gales tries to hit it over. Prunty will handle it. I should say Osterhage. Anderson. Back to Zhibovic. Gales. Left side set. Trissel with a hit. Clarkson. Anderson. Left side. Zabonic. Dig. Smurfs. Another good volley going here. Osterhage is able to capitalize. And the Raiders up by two now. 13 to 11. Eliza's had a splendid second game for Wright State. Eliza did a nice, nice job on that play. That rally. She Blocked well at the net, and then she got the kill there at the end. She's playing really well. Allie Smurs, who scored the game point. I should say that she was in the service in the game point when Wright State took that first game, 15 to 8. And that is a tough one. I don't know, did that touch the net? Apparently it did. I couldn't so, tell from here. Just barely. Well, that floater can really dip. Spurs unable to capitalize, so the side out back to the Flames. This is Gina Kanifa, number nine for the Flames. And a quick shot there, number four for the Raiders, Mandy Gells. Kanifa, Smurs, right side set, Osterhage, kept alive by the Flames. I don't know how they did, but it's still in play. Clarkson, Anderson, sets up Shepard, good block of the net by Liza. Left side hit by Filkins. Osterhage with the hammer. Side out back to Wright State. Whoa, I think that one's going to go to the Flames. And Coach Joylin Tracy not real happy. She made her way out to the floor. And you can see the shot right there grimacing as she heads back to the bench. Yeah, that was pretty close. <laughs> Let's see how that affects this one. Wright State now leading 13 to 12. And we're going to have a call against UIC on the net. So back it goes. However, UIC with that point has crept within one as we head to the latter stages of this game number two. Osterhage with the service. Clarkson, Anderson, left side set to Shepard. 
skills. Trissel will try it at the net, and she'll score the point for the Raiders. It's Tara Trissel, senior out of Piqua High School, with a point for the Raiders, and Don August will call the timeout. Head coach for UIC. 14 to 12, we'll get a chance to see it, Angie. Yeah, now you can see Tara's, she jumps so well, and she's so high up in the air. And she hits the ball, she doesn't ex have to hit it hard, just enough to hit it right off the hands, and it falls right in front of the blockers. You know, I'm so impressed with the decision making that's required in this sport. You know, not only do you have to be athletic, you have to be skilled, but you have to make snap quick decisions. You have to make decisions that are, are based off of your team as well as the other team. You have to be aware of what's going on on their side of the court, where the holes are in their defense, um, you know, their blockers, if, if, if their middles are closing every time. As a hitter, you've got to be able to see that. As a setter, you've got to know that as well. So you, not only do you pay attention to your side of the court, you need to, you know, watch your opponent as well. Now let's see how these teams come out. You see the score there. Right stage is two, or I should say just one point away. And they will have the service. Liza Osterhage being encouraged by her teammates along the sideline. You see there near side of your picture, Andrea Voss. Hoping that her teammates can put it away right here. Osterhage in play. Clarkson, Anderson. Dig by day. Gels left side hit the Prunty and she scores it. And the Raiders have taken game two by a score of 15 to 12. Looks like in the way it was drawn up, they executed it perfectly. Perfectly. And, and passing, again, is key here. And with good passes, you can run that middle and, and let Darlene and Liza do their thing. Well, the players make their way off the court for the break between the second and the third games. Right State, you can see, winning the first two, 15-8 and 15-12. We'll go ahead and take a break and come back with more here from the McLean Gym and the Nutter Center at Wright State University in just a moment. You're watching Wright State Volleyball on Time Warner Sports. Well, what'll it be, sweetheart? Let me guess, a nice cold Pepsi. I wouldn't want to hear one of those crazy voices of yours, huh? Honey, you ain't heard nothing yet. Hit it, fellas. They say if you build a better mousetrap. Introducing the new Xerox Document Center. Because it's digital, Document Center scans the image once, stores it in memory, and prints out laser-sharp copies. With an upgrade, it becomes a powerful fax. Oh, and with a short, straight paper path, it's designed to be more reliable. Soon, you'll even be able to print and fax right from your desktop. The Xerox Document Center. It might just be the best mousetrap we've ever made. For your Dayton area Xerox needs, call DocuSource. I want to start investing. Hmm. I heard about these new inflation indexed I bonds from the U.S. Treasury that guarantee a return above inflation. Well, we don't offer them, but there's this new stock. It guarantees a return. Wow, no. Look, but... I want an investment that's guaranteed to stay ahead of inflation, like the I bond, but... that's safe, like the I bond, and will let me get started with as little as $50. Like the I bond. Right. Uh -huh. Choosing the college that's right for you can be tough. If you're looking for a university that can help you start right, look at Wright State University. We are committed to your success. We offer more than 140 degree programs and many have been nationally recognized for excellence. Wright State is dedicated to building a better tomorrow for its students. The best come to Wright State. Check us out and you'll see why. Call 1-800-247-1770. That's 1-800-247-1770. There is an easier way to find a job. The MCC, together with JobTrack.com, bring you the largest job listing website exclusively for students and alumni. It's where over 400,000 businesses have come looking for talents just like yours. The MCC and JobTrack.com, the fastest track between school and work. Check it out at your school's career center. What? Hmm, Dean's List. What does it take to bring you the best comedy on television? A can-do attitude, some fancy footwork, the ability to pile on the charm. 
the know-how to use your head, plus a little grace, some style, and plenty of sensitivity. Why, I've never been so insulted in my life. Well, it's early yet. From classic favorites to cutting-edge performances, the best place for comedy is Time Warner Cable. Imagine what's next. And we're back at the C.J. McClin gym on the campus of Wright State University in the Nutter Center. See the Raiders uh, leading two games to none, Angie. Uh, tough struggle. This is a scrappy UIC team. Very scrappy. And I also think, though, that it's good because at the same time, it's kind of helped Wright State out a little bit because I think at certain times in the game, they're not as scrappy as they should be. And then Wright, or UIC makes a big play, and, and Wright State steps up as well. You know, Karis Day, who has played very well all season long for Wright State, Having a little problem struggling, you know, with the outside hits, but that's where you found out a lot about your team. A lot of people have contributed. Ali Smurz has been able to help out with some dicks. Mandy Gells, another solid game. The sophomore from St. Henry, able to set up two players in particular, Darlene Prunty and Lisa Osterhage, who have really carried the offense here in these first two games. Hey, Chris, that's what makes a good team is when one of your key players is off that your other players can step up at the same time. And, and I think, you know, Mac Mandy recognizes it, and she's using her middles. That, you know, they're passing well here. They're able to execute. They have more options. Um, and so, it, it, you know, it's less impact when one of your key players is, is having a little off night. The second game, you can see by the score of 15 to 12 close, it was tied at 11, very crucial moment of the game. And Wright State was able to get control 13 to 12 at one point. but. On that game point, the Raiders were able to execute perfectly. We're going to have a chance to see it again, the game point for game two. Yeah, you know, that's a great play to run because you can notice that middle blocker was nowhere in sight. Um, they, you know, they weren't expecting it. The outside blocker was kind of floating out, and, and Darlene was just able to place the ball. And Darlene's footwork has been so important here tonight for any hitter. The way they seem to bounce on their feet like a prize fighter, you know, to get in position, it really looks like it's so smooth and it's just a, it's so graceful to see her able to slide right over and Mandy Gale's able to hit her almost all the time. Yeah, footwork for a middle hitter is very important. Um, you know, you go in and you got to go in explosive and you have to go close to your setter. You got you to be able to see the pass, know where it's coming from and read your setter as well, and, and as well as your setter read you. Um, so, and you know, on a play like the one we just saw where Darlene goes around to the back, she's actually going off um, one foot as like it's a layup. Sometimes that's how they'll teach it to the younger kids when they're just learning how to play. Think of a basketball layup, you know, so that's similar to what it is. Angie, you talk about basketball. Here's Mandy Jelinek, a member of the Wright State women's basketball team. Uh, she's getting set for tonight. It's a big night. It's midnight madness. The women's and men's teams uh, will be introduced in just a few hours here down at the Nutter Center. You know, we're on live here tonight, and folks watching, come on down. It's uh, not that far, and uh, you can come down and see the men's and women's basketball teams. And we might mention this season here on Time Warner Sports, all the home games, men's and women's, will be live right here on Time Warner, so make sure you make a note of that during the season. Angie, we got a few moments before the players make uh, their way back out. You can see Wright State on the floor. UIC has yet to uh, make an appearance, and as we say that, they start running in from the right side uh, into the gymnasium. But got to ask you, this is the second game we've worked together. A former Raider player just graduated this past season. What's it like for you to sit here and see the game from this perspective compared to when you were out there? It's It's got to be tough. It's tough, but on the same hand, it, it's exciting. Yeah. Um, because I'm looking at it from more of an analytical overview perspective, you know, and, and so I'm kind of looking at both sides where sometimes as a player you get concerned with yourself, your teammates, what's happening on your court right here, and sometimes you miss the big picture. So it's kind of exciting, uh, you know, it's a, it's a different aspect of the game and, and one that I haven't had much before and, and I'm enjoying it. Each team looks for improvement throughout the season. So I mentioned our second game earlier but last month it was the University of Central Florida against Wright State. What kind of improvement have you seen in this team at, at compared to game one? Well, I, I think that um, what I like that's happening in this game, and I definitely think it's an improvement, is that they are utilizing the middles more and getting all your players involved in your offense. Um, I, I, I think that's key. Um, you know, they got to keep up the passes, and they so far have seemed to be doing pretty good on that because you can't run the middle unless you have a good pass. So I, I think, you know, they've come, they've, they've come a long way. I, I definitely think that they're improving, and I'm looking forward to, you know, seeing them even towards the end of the season. They should do well in the MCC. Enthusiastic bunch there. We can see the camera right in the huddle with Joylyn Tracy. And she is able to get with her players and 
I think she says right now, let's get it uh, together right now, guys, and uh, let's put them away in game three. Yeah, th this is an important game for Wright State right now because they just came off one in two close games, and they've had a break. And sometimes that break, you know, you, you kind of get out there, you think, oh, we got two games going here. It's important for the players to come out and, and be aggressive and, and win this game. See, Tara Trissel out on the floor will start the third game and big smile on her face, a senior trying to rally her troops together here and have the Raiders get off to a good start winning those first two games, 15 to eight and 15 to 12. Look at some of the stats uh, from the uh, first two games. We see 34 assists, Mandy Gells just another day at the office. Raiders led in kills by Liza Osterhage with 13 on the attack side for UIC. They're led by nine by Laura Clarkson and Tia Shepard. Wright State will have, we mentioned Trissel in the game along with Prunty, Mandy Gells, Karis Day, Ali Smurs, and Liza Osterhage. UIC and Hintz. You see Karis Day right there as we go back to our wide shot and Ann Hintz along the left side bouncing the ball, ready for the officials to say, let's start this game number three from the McClendon gym. And there we go. Gills. Sets up Prunty, a little off balance. Raiders keep it alive, and it goes out. Prunty didn't even see that second hit back over, but teamwork again helps Wright State keep it alive, and they're able to have the side out. Or do we have a reversal? Coach Tracy, you can see, out on the floor on the near side, not happy with that call, and now maybe she's clapping her hand. I guess she got the explanation. So that will be a point scored for the Flames. I didn't see maybe one of the Raiders had touched the ball before it went out. Yeah, I didn't see that one either. Official Steve Beckel had a better shot of it than we did, and Flames now take a 2 0 lead. If my memory serves me correct, this is the biggest lead the Flames have had. Oh, I take that back in game one when they scored the seven straight points, had a 7 3 lead. You see the Chief, a little short on that shot was Hints. Kind of hit the bottom of her palm. Yeah. So she just mishit it. Mandy Gills with 34 assists already in this game. And terrific for the Raiders, setting up the middle very well. Sets up Trissel this time with a left side hit. Clarkson with a dig. Clarkson will get it back from Anderson. The block at the net by Prunty. Wright State with a point now trails by one. Karis Day likes what she sees. <laughs> This is a very demonstrative group. You can see a lot of them show a lot of motion. Yeah, I think volleyball's kind of like that. You know, you, if you have a team that's out there that's just kind of monotone and, and, you know, going through, through the, the motions, motions you know, they're not going to be the best team on the court. It's a team that's passionate, that gets into the game, gets fired up, because it's so much a game of mental. And that helps right there. Darlene Funty again with a big spike. <laughs> Here's Voss in. Trista will check out. <laughs> We had a chance to see that again. Yeah, Manny, great job setting her up. Nobody there. Darlene has an open net. See, UIC like is not even expecting it. You see a good shot there of Punty with a whip-like effect with her arm as she was coming through on that kill. Score the point for the Raiders. Game tied at two here in game three. Wright State looking for the sweep. Took game one 15 to eight. And game number two by a score 15-12. Shepard hints. Back to Filkins. Raiders with a hit. Gale sets up Day. And you won't see that often. Mandy Gales not in sync with one of her outside hitters. And it'll be a side out for UIC. Harris Day is still struggling, trying to find her stroke. Gales, Prunty. Touch finesse. Anderson. Nice shot. That's a great shot. Lynn Clarkson saw that backside open. And she was able to capitalize on it. Sometimes players forget about those deep corners back there because you have your middle back person standing in the middle of the court, and those deep corners are open like that. That was a good shot by her. Whistle side out right state on the infraction on the service. Gretchen Bush will come in, and Prunty will come out. Bush with a service. Nearly able to score, and up on the front, Osterhage as Anderson, the setter, seemed to be crawling along the front line, and Liza took advantage of it. 
Well, that's the middle's job, is to, is to watch the setter, watch for those tips coming over, because the middle will have to take those. Third game tied at three, blocked by Osterhage. Kept alive by Smurz. Day is going to have to hit it over, and she does. Anderson. Oh. Hit by Filkins, blocked by the right state middle. Was that Osterhage? That was Osterhage. I see Liza does a, does a great job of getting out, penetrating over the net. It's a wall. Nobody's getting through that. Good timing on the jump. Was it tipped on the near side? No, it wasn't. Point right state on the Aaron shot by Lynn Clarkson. Raiders on a roll now. Lead by a two, five to three. Wilkins blocked by Osterhage. Kept alive by Shepard, but too many hits. And Wright State scores yet another point. And Shepard lobbing that, hey, I hit it with one hand. Mm. Apparently not. And Don August will call another timeout. Wright State up now 6-3 to three in game number three, looking for the knockout punch. Very exciting. It's very exciting. You know, Wright State's just executing all the plays very well right now, playing together, staying up. You know, everybody's contributing, doing a great job. You know, I really like what I see with Allie on her defense. I mean, she's picked up the defense. It, you know, when you get a good defensive play, it, it picks up your team. I think that's kind of sparked it for him. You know, this is a good time. You just don't know if you're beating the game what you're going to get. And get a good shot there at Joylyn Tracy, head coach at Wright State. And she says one thing she does is she, she tries to tell her players, even before a game, you know, you have to learn how to focus and get yourself prepared mentally for each game. You know, I can't yell at you, do this, tell you all this, and just cloud your mind with all this information. You know, you have to find a way. Yeah, and you have to focus the whole time during the game as well. Volleyball is such a sport of momentum that, it, 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 you know, the good teams are the teams that can push the whole way through and focus the whole time. Raiders coming off a 3-1 loss at Milwaukee after a 3-2 win up at Green Bay on the road. And back to action we are. Bright State scores yet another point. It's now 7-3. Gretchen Bush with the service along the back line with teammate Andrea Voss. Anderson, Voss with a dig attempt, but it was too strong. That was Lynn Clarkson with a big hit. So side out UIC. Coming into tonight's match, both of these teams at two and two in conference play. And this is a big win for Wright State if, if they win this game. They really need to because, you know, teams like UIC that are at the same level as you, those are the games that you need to take. Yes, if you're the Flames, you think about your last game against Bradley, trailing the first two games. We're able to storm back in three straight to take that match three games to two. I'm sure the Raiders very well of that, aware of that, and they don't want to give any opportunities to the Flames. And Wright State continues to pour, pour it on the Flames. Now an 8-3 to three lead. If they can finish this game strong, Angie, I would think you could carry that momentum, as you spoke of just a moment ago, into their next matchup against Loyola. Oh, yes, Chris. <laughs> that's, and they'll need it. That's a good point. They will need it. Loyal is a strong team, and, you know, especially if they win this game in three, you know, if they were to go five games tonight, that's tiring to come back the next day, you know, get a good night's rest, come back the next day and play a big team like Loyola. So this, this will be good, you know, if they can pull this off in three games. Side out back to UIC. Smurs with a smash. Clarkson handles. Right side hit by Shepard. There's Day with a dig. Gets the set back from Gills. Anderson sets Shepard. Left side to Filkins. Day, Gills, sets up Osterhage. Good block at the net. And they're going to call the point to UIC. Apparently one of the Raiders got the finger in the net. And it's now 8-4. to four. UIC has cut the lead in half. You see all the Raiders right there out communicating again. Yeah, communication, especially on serves, is key because you don't want to play that ball if it's going out. You want to let it go out because that's an easy side out for you. Judgment again. Good decision by Wright State. Have doubled up the lead on UIC here in game three. Raiders have taken the first two games. Anderson, left side hit and score. That's Shepard, who really has been on the attack all night long for the Flames. Tara Shepard second on this team in kills per game. There's Man. 
Andy Gales. So it's a side out back to Wright State. Prenti quickly jumps back into the game and Bush out. Here we go again. Liza's, uh, uh, she's been very effective running that slide on the back side. The, middles, the middle blocker's not there. They have a hole in the court. And it's an easy kill for the middles. Interesting. Gales there flat-footed. Wasn't jumping like she normally does. Set to Prunty. UIC keeps alive. Good volley here. Good dig by Osterhage. Here's Tara Trissel. UIC Anderson. Set up Clarkson. Dig by Smurz. Gales back set right side. Prunty! Once again, those middles have been so effective on those slides. So effective. The, the middle for UIC is nowhere in sight. And Darlene Prunty, Liza Osterhage take advantage of that all night long. It's 9-4, Wright State. And we have a service error. Not what you want to see right now. Substitutions, UIC. Number three, Ann Henson to the game. Looks like she'll handle the serve. Lynn Clarkson, also 13, back into the lineup. Coach Don Hudson. Hens puts it in play. Murs, Smurs calls for it. Here's Prunty at the net. Nice play by Shepard to tip it back over to the middle of the Raider defense. Trissel with the hit. Scores for the Raiders on the side out. 9-4 Wright State. Tara Trissel. And a great game in that game against UCF. I believe she had about 9-10 kills in that encounter. And has didn't start tonight, but uh, has been able to play well midway through the second game. Now here into the third game. Side out, UIC. I think it definitely helped when they brought in Tara to this game. They needed a little bit of experience, um, and, you know, and she's done done well, played smart. She worked hard in the offseason, and it's really paid off for her this year. Gills sets up Prunty. Prunty finds the hole in the defense. Shepard makes a valiant effort, but she can't keep it in play, and Prunty continues to have a very, very pleasant evening. Andrea Voss will go back and set left side for the service for the Raiders, looking for their 10th point. Anderson, good hit at the net. Strong play by Prunty and Clarkson. And we have a late whistle call, and Joylyn Quasey walking down onto the floor saying, what? She said both players had a right for the ball, but maybe from her angle she didn't see, and she gets an explanation from Steve DeBacco. Side out flames. Dig Voss misfires, unable to hit it where she wanted to hit it. Mandy Gells gets her teammates together in the huddle as they await the next service from UIC. Trailing now, nine to four are the Flames. Voss with a dig slides out the sideline. Harris Day misfires, so the point UIC Flames. It's now a three-point game. Wright State just needs to get a good pass here. Voss, the dig, yells. Prunty with a nice little turnover there. Was able to get it over the front line. And ball hit the floor, uncontested. So Wright State back with the side out. Gretzen Bush replaces Prunty. Bush will put the ball in play. Anderson, left side set. Filkins, did it stay in? Was it touched? It yes, touched. it did. So the side out back to UIC. Number 12, Tim Forster into the game along with Ann Hintz, number three. Forster will get the service for UIC. So the Flames looking to change the momentum here in game three, trailing already by two games. Gills, left side, Smurs with a smash. Forster sets up Anderson at the net. Left side set to Clarkson. Gills, back set. Day, touched out. Gina Kaniva with a point for UIC. Back to a two-point game, 9-7. to seven. So this one taking along the theme of that game, too, mm -hmm. where it was close throughout. Gells, middle set to Smurs, and that's too, too hot to handle. Vicky LeBlow was able to get her hands on it, but unable to get it in a position to where she was able to set up one of her front liners to get it back over the net. Freshman Smurs with a kill. Back on the side out. Day with a service. 
Up front, Osterhage. Gels to Osterhage with a smash. It's in. You can almost see that brewing with Liza. Yeah, you know, the pass was perfect to start with, and then Liza was ready for the ball. She was calling for it. She's on tonight. She's on fire. She knows it. She wants it, and it'll be a kill. With the answer, Lindsay Wilkins. But she's unable to keep it in play. We have a timeout, UIC, on the field effort by Filkins and Wright State back on top 11 to 7. As momentum going back and forth and right now in favor of Wright State. And you can see why Coach Don August called the timeout. Yeah, right now he's hoping that this timeout will kind of break Wright State's run that they've been on. Um, they're playing really well, very well. And I'm sure he's saying to his players, let's, let's get this together. You know, it's going to be too late. This game's going to be over. you got to wake up now. Saw Joy Lynn just a moment ago, and there's Don August right there explaining to his players, maybe, maybe he's telling them, hey, we, you know, we were down at Brad against Bradley on a neutral floor, and we were able to come back. And uh, as you added to there just a moment ago, Angie, encouraging this team, but they were a very scrappy bunch at the University scrappy. of Illinois Chicago. And they only trailed by four at this point. And conversely, Joy Lynn Tracy telling her players, execute, 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 I would imagine. Just to be able to finish off their opponent here, don't even want to give them an opportunity to get back into this match. That's right, Chris. Back to live action we are here with Karis Day handling the <laughs> disbelief shown on her face as she puts the ball back in play with the service. Anderson, left side hit. Blocked by the Raiders at the net. Wilkins tried for the kill. But the Raiders were able to block and score. 12-7. Clarkson and the setter again. This time she's been setting all night long, but as Mandy Gels does on occasion, Anderson will go for the kill. Side out back to the Flames. Anderson looking for the play call as she puts it in play. Smurs, Gels sets up Osterhage. And was it tipped by the Flames? Yes, it was. Side out back to the Raiders. Trissel back in, and Boss will come out. Trissel along the front line with Liza Osterhage. Andy Gels, the setter in the middle, outside hitter, Karis Day. Osterhage, there it is. I think she was licking her chops. She can see that space open. Yeah, she did a great job there. She owns that net, Chris. She owns it. It's hers. You know, no, you can see she's right on the setter there where she's supposed to be. Penetrates over the net and puts it straight down. 13 to 7 right state. Actually, you see a lane, I should say a lane violation, I should say a net violation on the Raiders. So at side out, we'll go back to UIC. Day, Gales left side, Trissel. Flames handle it, Anderson hit into the net. Side out, back to the Raiders, Prunty back in. Bush is out. Looks like Osterhage will have the service for Wright State. Just two points shy now of putting this one away in three games. Osterhage. It's Clarkson at the net. It's Prunty. Wright State all night long has had so much success in the middle, and especially up front with Prunty and Osterhage. Yeah, you know, their, their experience is showing through here. They're really using the middles, and, and you know, it also comes from the rest of the team being able to get those passes to target and Manny setting in the ball. Osterhage, little staccato clapping in the background here at the McLean Gym, the partial Raider fans. And they're not going to score on this as Leah Shepard is able to counter back with the kill. And Shepard on the side out, back it goes to UIC. Raiders just need to keep the composure. Sometimes it's so difficult. Maybe you want to press a little bit too much, but keep executing the way they have most of the evening. Gills sets up Prunty. Was it tipped along the far side? No, it wasn't. Flames will score the point. 14 to 8. Hints. A couple of bounces with the service. Day, Gills middle, sets left side. Trissel. 
Good dig on the backside by Hans, but unable to keep it alive in the middle are the Flames. So side out back to the Raiders. Now it's Mandy Gell's opportunity to put it away. Raider crowd back into it, looking for the three-game sweep. Anderson at the net, Prunty, Osterhage rather. Whistle before the hit, and they're going to call an infraction, and it's going to go against UIC. So we have reached the end of this one. 15 to 8, Raiders win game number three. They win the match. Now three and two in the Midwestern Collegiate Conference, and the UIC Flames drop to two and three, 13 and five overall. Wright State now eight and nine overall. An impressive performance here tonight in front of the home crowd, Angie. Very exciting. Three games is always nice. <laughs> and that first one, little nip and tuck. Second game, you can see very, very close. But Wright State, for the most part, limited the errors uh, that they has plagued them off and on during the season. Something you see with a young team, but they were able to come up with the three-game sweep here tonight. Yeah, that and running their middles and playing together as a team, and they really did that effectively tonight. They stayed together as a team. Well, Angie, we had a little fun. We're going to come back and wrap this one up just to finish. You can see the victorious Raiders ready to have a little more fun. We'll take a break. We'll be back at the McClin Gym here at the Nutter Center at Wright State. Just a moment. You're watching Wright State University Volleyball on Time Warner Sports. Well, what'll it be, sweetheart? Let me guess. A nice, cold Pepsi. I wouldn't want to hear one of those crazy voices of yours, huh? Honey, you ain't heard nothing yet. Hit it, fellas. They say if you build a better mousetrap. Introducing the new Xerox Document Center. Because it's digital, Document Center scans the image once, stores it in memory, and prints out laser-sharp copies. With an upgrade, it becomes a powerful fax. Oh, and with a short, straight paper path, it's designed to be more reliable. Soon, you'll even be able to print and fax right from your desktop. The Xerox Document Center. It might just be the best mousetrap we've ever made. For your Dayton area Xerox needs, call DocuSource. Great win for the Raiders here tonight at the McLean Gym. 15-8, 15-12, 15-8 over Conference Pro UIC. UIC drops to two and three, Wright State now. Three and two, curious coach Joylyn Tracy talking to her troops after this matchup. And she's a little nervous before tonight's match. And, uh, She'll be feeling a little bit better right now. You can see that right now. Having a little fun with her players. Yeah, definitely. You know, any time before a match like this, when you know you, that you have two teams, you know, equal in, in skills, and you just you just want to come out victorious, and, and she did. Let's talk about the middle again tonight. That was the key for Wright State. Liza Osterhage, as well as uh, Darlene Prunty, Mandy Gells, another superlative effort setting up the big people up front. And as we look down the uh, attack score sheet here tonight, you look at uh, what the, those uh, those players have done. Lisa Ozerhage with 19 kills, Darlene Prunty with 14, 44 assists tonight for Mandy Gells. I mean, she's just remarkable. Yeah, Mandy's you know she's a smart player. She's great at what she does, and and you know it it shows tonight. You know the way that she was able to spread out her offense, recognize what was going on on the other side of the court, and connect with their middles, and you know paid off. And the attack percentage tonight for Wright State, a key. 18, well, about a .186, 186 average, and you look at the attack for UIC. Good defense tonight for Wright State, only .85 tonight, just 85% there for the uh, UIC, the visitor Flames. So a lot of the contribute to a, a, a huge team effort here tonight, both defensively and offensively. Then, and you know, contributing to that was the blocks in the middle, because not only were the middles hitting well, but the team was also blocking very well, and you know, that, that helps. Well, the Raiders are able to come out on top here tonight. Angie, it's been a pleasure once again working with you and uh, look forward to it the next time. Thanks, Chris. I'll be back. <laughs> Another three-set win here tonight. UIC was the victim to Wright State. And fans, we thank you very much for watching tonight. Once again, the Raiders sweep UIC. Go to 3-2 and two in the conference. We thank you for watching Wright State University Volleyball here on Time Warner Sports. For Angie Nunley and our entire crew of Time Warner, have a good evening. Thanks for watching Wright State University Athletics on Time Warner.
most fun things to do along the South Florida coast is shelling at sunset. Look what I found. Some of the prettiest colors. And here's a conch shell. The gentle waters off Sanibel carry shells unbroken onto its beautiful beaches. During your stay in South Florida, the way it used to be, you can call the camping cabins located at many KOA campgrounds home. Mild evening breezes drift through them, and with their ample bunks and front porches, they can serve as a perfect headquarters while you explore the area. When you visit Sanibel, don't miss the Ding Darling Wildlife Refuge. A five-mile bike path meanders through the 5,000-acre park that provides sanctuary for nearly 300 species of birds, reptiles, and marine life. As you ride the trails through woods and coastal marshes, you'll see both migratory and resident birds in their natural habitat. This is truly South Florida the way it used to be. Near where the Tamiami Trail turns east toward the Gold Coast, the town of Naples perches on a narrow strip of sand. Gateway to the Everglades, Naples boasts unbelievable public beaches and a 1,000-foot fishing pier where you can catch snook, grouper, and red snapper. On the edge of town, you'll find Jungle Larry Zoological Park and Caribbean Gardens. Lakes and lagoons lap the winding trails. Primates run free on several islands. And there are trained animal acts daily. Santane, sit. Santane! What we're going to do here, so I'm going to have Hadari pick up this dime, and all you need to do is stick your hand out like that, and she'll give it back to you, okay? Good girl, Hadari. No, Hadari, trunk. Trunk. All right, give it to Alexandra. All right. Good girl. Back up. Good girl. Visitors of all ages love the thrill of an airboat ride into the heart of the Everglades' vast swampland. These safe and powerful boats glide through miles of brush on the winding waterways of this unspoiled world. If you prefer your tour by land, Wooten's airboat tours will take you for a swamp buggy ride through the sandy pathways where you might meet some of the local residents. On the east side of the Everglades, you can visit an authentic Miccosukee Indian village. There, you can witness how these Native Americans survived for centuries in the Everglades and see demonstrations of tribal crafts and maybe even catch some alligator wrestling. Some 50 miles to the north is Lake Okeechobee source of the Everglades and one of South Florida's best kept secrets. Though it's one of the largest lakes in the east, 750 square miles, it's only 14 feet deep. But if you're a fisherman, there's nothing like a day on Lake Okeechobee where you can float for hours in your boat, dangling your line in hopes of catching largemouth bass, bluegill, or the local favorite, black crappie. For an up-close and personal encounter with the animal kingdom on land, head straight for the Lion Country Safari and KOA campground near West Palm Beach. This 500-acre preserve is the next best thing to the Serengeti because lions, ostriches, giraffes, antelope, rhinos, and zebras roam free and uncaged, and they have the right-of-way. Needless to say, convertibles are not allowed. You can also see man and horse perform together in an unparalleled display of strength, speed, and agility. From West Palm to Sarasota to Tampa, polo is one of South Florida's most alluring spectator sports. During the winter season, you can drive right up to the field and enjoy a picnic while you watch this fast-paced game. It's easy to see why people come to visit year after year in the lap of this legendary southern hospitality. Whether you choose to be on the bay, river, ocean, or lake, setting up camp under a spreading live oak tree in a friendly campground is always a little bit like coming home. Then hike the nearby trails to share Florida's luxuriant foliage with the family. Or float down a lazy river in canoes looking for the perfect fishing spot. When you camp out, your time is all your own to explore the bounty of South Florida the way it used to be. 
Traveling On will be right back. Remember when your folks rented that cabin on the lake? All those good times are just memories now, or are they? Today's young families can still rent cabins on KOA campgrounds all across North America. By lakes, streams, near mountains, on the desert, even close to the city. KOA camping cabins are a fun, economical way to stay when you're out traveling on vacation. Next trip, check into KOA and start making memories all over again. your home safe for you and your family. Like setting your water heater at 120 degrees Fahrenheit to prevent burns and installing smoke alarms outside of bedrooms. If your home was built before 1978, have it tested for lead-based paint. Did I mention proper wiring? For a free brochure on HUD's Healthy Homes and to learn how an FHA loan can help you buy a home, just call. HUD and FHA are on your side. The Florida Keys extend like the arm of the Big Dipper out into the Gulf of Mexico, stepping stone islands known as the American Caribbean. South Florida's most famous regional specialty is key lime pie, which has been around since the 1890s. And here, on Isla Mirada Key, this unassuming roadside eatery claims that theirs is the best. What is this, Mary? The 37th slice? Um, Miss. the 40th, Don. 40th. At Manny and Issa's, the key lime is almost a sacred fruit in huge demand all over. In fact, the key lime was almost completely destroyed back in the 1950s by hurricanes that blew down many of the trees. Oh, no. Oh, but Manny was smart, and he planted his own. And today he uses them in his special Cuban marinades as well as his key lime pies. After lunch, you might want to visit the second oldest marine park in the world, Theater of the Sea. It's a place of pools and lagoons, giant sea turtles, and spectacular shows. Perhaps the most fascinating opportunity here is a chance to swim with the dolphins, the Earth's most beloved aquatic creature. Make reservations. It's an experience you'll never forget. Although many of the keys are connected by highway, some are only accessible by boat. From Lower Matacum Key, you can hire a boat to take you east to Indian Key. The pleasant trip will glide you through the warm waters of the Gulf, home to sport fish like marlin, swordfish, and mako shark. Legend has it that Indian Key, with its natural deep harbor, was once a haven for pirates until the native Calusa Indians burned them out. You can take a self-guided tour of this 12-acre island. One of the freest ways to camp is by tent. Throw your gear in the car and move from place to place, stopping in at a convenient campground at the end of the day. On Fiesta Key, nestled in the heart of this island necklace, you can leave the everyday world behind. Pitch your tent, cook a nice supper, and then dream of all the things you're going to do tomorrow. Finally, at the far end of this island string is Key West, southernmost of American cities. Key West's history is a fascinating tapestry of pirates and poets, boom and bust, seaside beaches and sidewalk galleries. 
On these leafy, narrow streets, you'll find Spanish colonial architecture and the island conch influence of shuttered windows and breeze-catching balcony porches. Writers and statesmen have long been drawn to Key West. Ernest Hemingway bought this house in 1931, and it's unlike any other on the island. Back when Key West was settled by pirates and explorers, their sailing ships often foundered in heavy seas and sank. And their precious cargoes went down with them and were buried in the sand. Here in the Mel Fisher Maritime Museum, you'll find amazing sunken treasure that Fisher retrieved from the Spanish galley in Atosha, which sank off the Keys in 1622. The millions of dollars worth of gold and jewels displayed is a fascinating reminder of this region's colorful past. Warmed by the Gulf Stream, these waters off Key West are home to more than 500 species of fish and 50 varieties of coral. One of the best ways to see this hypnotic sea world is sailing on a wonderfully elegant windjammer cruise. Specially trained guides will show you the underwater paradise that lies between the coast of Key West and the only living coral reef in North America. Snorkeling these beautiful waters and meeting the local denizens will make a memorable experience you'll treasure forever. And at the end of the day, head for the Mallory Square waterfront where strolling musicians, street vendors, and hundreds of curious people gather to serenade the sun as it sinks into the ocean, just 90 miles from Cuba. Once you get here, you may never want to leave as long as the sun keeps rising and you're at your home away from home at a KOA campground. If you want food, directions, a place to stay for a night or the entire winter, rely on the friendly folks at any of South Florida's KOA campgrounds. And that's our visit to South Florida, the way it was and still is. You'll want to take much more time than our half hour to explore the wonderful attractions interact with exotic wildlife, and smear on that lotion as you head for those miles and miles of sun-soaked beaches. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time on Traveling On. vehicles were provided by Mark III luxury vans and trucks.
everyone, and welcome to Time Warner Sports presentation of University of Dayton Flyer football. Today, it's the Flyers and the Drake Bulldogs from Welcome Stadium in Dayton, Ohio. Hello, everyone. I'm Kevin O'Boyle for Time Warner Sports. Today's matchup features two teams that are duking it out for the top rung in the Pioneer Football League ladder. The Drake Bulldogs coming in at 5-1 and one overall and 2-0 and oh in the conference. The Flyers right behind them at 5-2 and two overall and 1-0 and oh in the conference. Suffice to say, this one could very well decide first place overall in the Pioneer Football League in the 2000 season. Both clubs coming off tough losses a week ago in non-conference games. The Flyers losing a heartbreaker right here on home turf to the Robert Morris Colonials by four points. Last week, the Drake Bulldogs dropped a heartbreaker on the road at Southern Illinois, a full scholarship Division I AA club. The Flyers led by tailback Jermaine Bailey a week ago, who set a career high for himself with 186 rushing yards on the game against the Colonials. The Flyers head coach Mike Kelly had some thoughts to say about this week's matchup with the Drake Bulldogs and we had that chance earlier this week to talk over this matchup with him. But both teams are trying to improve on on their league standing. Drake is uh, 2 and 0 and we're 1 and 0 and it certainly is a big matchup. And you have what you have is uh, two teams that are both trying to bounce back from playing very good teams and both having tough losses. So you have the emotional aspect of it uh, and then along with the implications of, of league play. I think it's two outstanding football teams that are going to tee it up and get after it. If history repeats itself, this one should be a close one. As the last four meetings between these two schools, the games were decided by seven points or less, including last year's six-point flyer victory on the road at Des Moines, Iowa. It's the 5-2 and two Flyers and the 5-1 and one Drake Bulldogs. We'll have the opening kickoff coming up for you in just a moment. When we return to Welcome Stadium, we'll join Larry Hanskin and Chad Duff with the call on the first half. Stay with us. Time Warner Cable is at work in the Miami Valley, providing exceptional value, delivering superior service, and laying the groundwork for an amazing new digital entertainment and fiber optics network. Every day, in so many ways, we're investing in the communities we serve, from a den where dragons play to a tiny town that fires young imaginations. It's all happening right here, right now. Time Warner Cable. Imagine what's next. child, playtime is a rehearsal for the real world they will inherit as adults. It's where they learn to share, to dream. Don't underestimate the power of play. A message from the American Toy Institute. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Welcome Stadium and Pioneer Football League action today.